All right, uh, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually going to be talking about DCLI and the current status of it. I am proud to announce that it has finally uh, made it into the AUR. Uh, so you can download it now using uh, Yay or Peru. So you can just do Yay-S and then DCLI Arch-Git. So I do only have the Git version available right now. I will have a stable version soon, uh, but right now it is you know, still a uh, work in progress. Uh, so bear with me on that, but um, it is a lot easier to install and get, you know, running onto your system. So you just have to download it from the uh, AUR and then, you know, just get started from there. So I will go over, you know, a few other um, updates that I've done uh, to the tool itself here as well. But I did obviously want to mention that it is, you know, now available. You can build it from source as well still if you if you want to, or you can just download it from the AUR, which is the, the recommended uh, way of doing it. So it's easy and easy to update as well, because obviously with the other version, I did have an option to update it, but it was a little bit harder, not harder to do, but it had issues uh, with that update process. So um, now you should be able to update just fine with the package um, in the AUR. So yeah, so um, let's jump into some changes and things that I've created within this DCLI tool. If you're new to using uh, DCLI, to get started, once you install it from the AUR, you will just do DCLI init. And what this will do is create a arch config file in your .config uh, directory. It will have these files are uh, configured for you. So it'll have the host name based on the host name that's you know on your system currently. And then it'll have a modules folder where you can create uh, different modules for packages and things. And then it'll have a config uh, YAML file that just points to the active host. Um, so you do, if you do want to install this onto a different system, you can change which host is active on that system. So that way you can have whatever you want installed or uh, uninstalled based on your configuration. So very NixOS inspired uh, if you haven't <laughs> tuned into that already. But basically, as far as uh, defining packages, we can do it in the actual host by enabling the modules or just adding packages directly into the you know host file itself. And then I did add a few um, settings options for you. So you can add the Flatpak support, whether you want a user or system. Obviously, you do have to have you know, Flatpak installed in order for that to work. And then auto prune is the option to make it really feel like NixOS. So every time you sync, it'll either remove or add packages. Like if I have Discord in here, and then I want to remove it and delete that from my configuration. And then I do a sync. If I have this as true, it's going to remove Discord now that it's removed from my, my system to be, you know, completely declarative based on your actual package, based on your actual system configuration that you have here. And also you can define which a AUR um, helper you want to use, whether it's EA or Peru. Those are only two that are uh, supported as of right now, but I will add more in the future. But yeah, so you just um, add that line into the host YAML file and then you're, you're kind of good to go from there. And then you also can put in which, you can also uh, put in which, a backup option that you want to do, whether you want that to do snapper or um, time shift. Um, you can also add that in there too. I probably should add that in the, the readme here as far as in the settings goes, but that is an option for you to do. And then you also can exclude packages. Um, so if you don't want certain packages on certain systems, like if you have Steam and gaming, but you don't want to include it on this specific host, then you can just do um, Steam and then it'll, it'll exclude that from even if it's in a module that's on your system. And then creating modules is I guess pretty straightforward. You would just create the actual module, um, name it whatever you want, but it has to be add .yaml because that's the file option that you're using. And then you would just go in and add the packages that you want um, within that system. You will have an automatic like example YAML file on there. You can just copy or change, you know, straight from there. So it'll be set up the way you need it. And then you'll have a post install hook option so you can run it a script you know after the packages have been installed um so if you want additional things to be set up you can you know create your own script and run that um after the hook has been uh created and then you can actually change the hook behavior as well i added this because sometimes i didn't want either the script to run every time or i wanted to run once or i don't want it to run at all so you can do where you have it ask um every time you can also use once or or never so that way it won't ask you know again going forward or just ask the one time and then as far as syncing your system you would just do dcli sync um it'll stall missing packages um if you do have prune enabled it will also remove but if you do want to do dcli sync prune on your own and not have to do it every time then you can do the prune option also there's a dry run option just to preview what happens but even if you run dcli sync it doesn't just start syncing you do have to accept it before it starts syncing so either way you can use both of these and they kind of run the same way and as far as package management um i did add 
some TUI um, options. Um, so you can actually like search uh, for packages um, using the TUI um, option here. So I can go in here and do a DCLI search. And then as you can see, it's popping up with you know, all the packages. So, it, which is cool. I can now search for DCLI um, Arch Git. So that's now showing in the uh, repository now. So you can see there, and then I can actually do tab um, to select multiple. So if I wanted to select multiple packages, I can do that and then install all these packages in one go. But obviously I'm just going to um, cancel that for right now because I'm just showing you guys uh, what you can do there. And then you can install packages, um, update packages, and remove packages. Um, I do suggest using DCLI update if you are using um, DCLI in your system. So uh, to do that, um, you just do DCLI update. And then once you put in your your password for the you know system update, it's going to might have to put my password in and write, but it's going to create a uh, backup automatically when you do that. And then it's going to update your system and it'll also update flat packs um, when you update through here. And then it'll do another backup after the actual system has been updated. So that way you have multiple backups to be able to restore um, your system if something goes wrong or um, have any issues, you know, with that. So definitely suggest using the um, update through DCLI. Um, option and also going to do a uh, find. Um, so if you want to find a package like within your system, I can do a DCLI find, let's say Steam. So Steam is installed already um, and it's in my gaming packages um, that shows the file location uh, for that. So you can, you know, find a package if, if you want to and, and be able to see it there. Um, and then I did also add an option to uh, merge um, other packages. And also we'll talk about the edit um, option too, which will be nice for people to use. But the DCLI merge is going to add all unmanaged packages to the config. So it's going to add all the packages that are on your system that you have not defined already, and then add it into a declared.yaml uh, file onto your system. And then you can also do services as well. Keep in mind services is, is kind of brand new. Um, so I would use it at your own risk, but if I do DCLI merge uh, dash services, as you can see here, it'll add all of the services, you know, that are on uh, my system, but obviously, you know, use at your own risk um, because these services will, you know, be enabled and then you can add new services in there um, to have them enabled, you know, so you can actually kind of manage all of your uh, system D services from your configuration here on uh, with DCLI. I'm trying to, you know, eventually make it where you can just manage your entire system pretty much from DCLI and not have to really, you know, leave the Arch config um, folder and you can just run and do everything straight from here. So that's kind of the goal, obviously not there yet, but we're making our way. And then uh, for modules, I did add a TUI um, interactive um, option for that as well. So if I do a DCLI module enable, you can see here, here are all the modules that I have not enabled yet. So I can just go through and enable any of these modules uh, just by doing it. And then also I can do multi-select too. So if I want to have, you know, multiple of these um, enabled at once, I can do that by just enabling them there. And that'll ask me to install the packages right after that. So yeah, so that's an option that I have added. And then you could obviously just do the, the name of the, the specific module if you want to and disable you know, runs and acts and works the same way. And as far as configuration, these are some important um, options here. So you won't have to really more worry about migrate if you're installing this. Um, this is when I had this as a, it, it was just really just a huge bash script <laughs> initially before I switched to Rust. Um, so if you're on the older version, this is how you would migrate to the new version. But if you're just brand new, you just install it from the AUR and then you're good to go. Um, but these are important because um, you do want to have the ability to show the status of your configuration. So you'd be able to know, you know, what the host is, where it's at, your backup tool that you're using. If you're using Flatpak, all the enable mod modules and what's declared, what's not declared and all the, you know, packages that are installed in your system. So you want to be able to get this uh, down to... <laughs> basically all your packages being declared instead of, you know, having ones on your system that are not declared, but that's, you know, the kind of the goal um, of having the DCLI tool is being able to have everything, you know, declared and have all your, you know, packages and stuff in modules. So yeah, so that's uh, the status one. And then you have the validation, which is validates your um, Arch uh, configuration to make sure every, everything is, you know, good and configured. So every time you make a change, you can go ahead and do DCLI validate. And when you do DCLI sync, it does do a quick validation um, before it actually syncs it. So it's not going to just sync if something is, you know, incorrect or wrong. But it does show just one warning that I have here. I mean, everything else is good, but it's just saying that I have, 
non-yaml files in my modules directory, which is completely fine to have, but it's just l letting you know that those are not direct, you know, modules that will just run directly. They're actually, you know, in actual folders um, to be uh, to be synced as as you want them to. Uh, so yeah, so that's that, and I will show my actual Arch um, configuration here in a second, um, so you can see how I have av I have everything set up on my system. But yeah, so we have uh, Dcelet Edit, which is a really cool one that I like. So basically, Dcelet Edit is going to bring up all the you know files that you have on your system, whether it's host host module, the um, all the modules that you have, the host YAML file. So if I want to bring up my right here, if I hit Enter, it's actually going to open using whatever the editor that you want, which you can actually define in your host YAML file as well. Which I do need to add that up here too, because you can just do editor and then colon. And then whatever editor you want. So I have Helix um, as mine in my system, as you can see here. Um, editor is Helix. And then, you know, my AUR helper is Yay. You also can add your configuration backups if you want to uh, to be true and how many backups you want to do. So basically just backing up the current state of your Arch configuration. So that way you have backups of those as well. And then, you know, auto prune if you want that to you go through. I normally do change this to true, um, but this is a, a new system that I just installed this on. So it's not currently uh, set to true, but I can very easily do that. So yeah, so if, if, I, if I did want to do that, I could actually just come in here and set this to uh, true set this to true and then I can go ahead and uh, save it and quit and then as you can see the file is closed and I've updated it um, and it just shows like an output of what you know kind of happened there and then I go go ahead and clear that and get out of it so yeah so those are in there and like I said you can um, save your config or if you wanted to save automatically you can add that as an option in there I'm also going to re restore a config which you know does a interactive you know TUI as well to restore you know a different state of your current con configuration so just in case you made some changes you just want to go back to you know something you have and then you can do a DCLS sync and kind of go back to it. it's kind of like a an option to you know go back a generation um, like you you would on NixOS but slightly different because th this is like a generation and this is actually like a snapshot backup. So you can look at all the backups that you have, you know, listed on your system and then you can restore them by using the interactive TUI as well um, to restore a, 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 a certain snapshot at a different time. And then you have hooks. So these are all the hooks that are in your modules um, as far as like the uh, post installs hooks. You can run these separately outside of the, the module if you want to. So you can see a list of them. Uh, and this one also has an interactive TUI as well. So you can just do hooks run or you can make sure you skip or reset them. So they'll run again. Because I know that there's are going to be times where you want to want to do, you know, different things and have things run. And um, so I just want to give you the, the most flexibility that you can uh, within your system. And then importantly as well, you can also, I uh, also made some commands to make it easy to push and pull and uh, clone um, different uh, repositories. So you can actually get this uh, into a Git repo so you can actually manage this on multiple systems if you want to have multiple hosts and everything like that and then yeah so that that's pretty much all of the like the the new anything new and uh, just kind of a quick you know overview of what the tool you know does um, but i can actually show you you know my configuration um, that i have right now and one thing that i didn't mention there is dot files um, which i'm i'm working on getting that to kind of work a little bit more like gnu sto does um, but as you can see here, I have my uh, you know configuration up here, and and so basically this will work a lot like a NixOS uh, configuration would, where everything you need is in this uh, one file, and then you can and then you can configure everything. So I have all of my hosts um, right here. So these are all the different you know computers and stuff I have that are being managed by DCLI right now. ASUS and Flow are actually the same machine, but I <laughs> reinstalled it and didn't delete the old one. But I do need to delete the old one, uh, which is the ASUS one. But yes, yeah, so you can have different ones. So the desktop one is the one that I have right here that you're seeing right now. And then I have all my modules in here. So what's nice about this is if you put anything in a module and then in a dot .files folder, it'll automatically sync all of these dot .files when you run DCLI sync uh, and create sim links for them. So I can actually configure like my hyperland and my Neary configuration straight from my actual arch config without having to go into you know dot config slash Neary uh, to do so so if i want to make a change you know in my actual you know system here i can go into dot files and then go into Neary and then update you know my configuration as i as i, as I want to and then it'll, it'll update real time because it is actually sim linked to the actual dot files 
um, that I have in my uh, doc config, doc config uh, directory. I, w I and like I said, I want to make this a little bit more you know op operation like uh, GNU Sto or maybe in the or in the YAML file for your host. Um, you can define different sim links that you want outside of doc config because I know sometimes you need something in like your home directory or like ZSH, ZSH or, you know, Bash RC or something like that. So I want to make it a little more flexible and not just like an automatic thing like the dot files are doing right now, but more be able to define it yourself because I really want to make this like really a flexible tool that you can create and make it your own system instead of just going by whatever I want it, want it to do. But yeah, so I do I have plans to do that. If you want to leave some comments below on how you think that might be, you know, best implemented, please do so and let me know. But you can basically just create um, any type of modules that you want. I mean, you can do this in any way that you want. So like I, I created like an um, editor's one for Helix. Um, so basically in, in Helix, all it's doing is installing Helix and installing Helix. And then I have a post install script to actually install the Capuchin uh, Mocha um, option that I want. So it's just an, installing that it's just a bash script that actually installs um, that configuration and adds the you know the the toml file and everything for that so i don't have to do that manually myself so if i get onto a new system and i want to have helix on it i can just enable the helix editor and then boom i have it themed and all ready to go as soon as i you know enable it so it's a good and nice way to do that. I have some login managers here. So I like the S S Y S uh, greet option and then i have a script for that and then the module to enable it and and then I have like, for instance, in gaming, I have the controller support one. The controller support one basically just has a script that runs like the UDEV rules and adds those into, you know, my system that I have. So I have all the rules down here in the folder, which I probably should put, put it actually in the folder with the supports, so everything's in one spot, but I do have it out here, outside here in the root directory. But it's just putting all of these different, you know, controller rules for like enabling gyro and stuff for a lot of different controllers and stuff that I have and use and test. And then here, all the packages that are being installed when I do run this module. So a controller support, you know, is very easy. And then I have like gaming packages. So like all the my gaming packages and stuff, there's no hook or anything for this one, but installs are the gaming packages that I want. So if I want gaming on a specific machine, but on another one, I just don't enable it on other ones, enable it on the ones that I want. So it's really flexible and, you know, pretty easy. And it is just using a YAML file. So everything is, you know, you can add comments, you can add anything you want um, in here. You just have to use the same structure for it to be able to, you know, read it correctly. And it, if it doesn't validate, then you, you'll know by just running the uh, DTLI validate option to make sure everything is, you know, configured and uh, correctly and, you know, modules are in the correct, you know, format and array and everything. So you can't really mess it up. Uh, when you do when you do the merge, um, you'll get the system packages that will be added to your configuration and auto sync through uh, DCLI. And then also if you do DCLI install, it'll add it to this declared packages.yaml file. That way those files are also being declared and then you can move them into anywhere that you want, you know, afterwards and just make sure that they're saved somewhere else. But it does just automatically add it into your uh, declared, you know, arch config. So yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much, you know, my configuration. I could you know, obviously go through <laughs> every module and everything that I have, you know, enabled in there, but obviously I'm not going to do that right now. But yeah, if you have any, you know, definitely have any questions, just let me know, you know, in the comments uh, below. But I'm excited to, you know, have this in the AUR and and have an easy way to, you know, download it and use it. So if you enjoy my content, you know, please definitely consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Uh, if you want to support uh, my tools and things that I'm creating and my, you know, YouTube journey here, you can do so at ko-fi.com uh, slash Don, And I will be updating some things um, on that side as well. For people who do support, I'll throw them some things and maybe some um, some extra options and things. Um, so that way, as I'm testing, I can have, you know, testers test things before it actually reaches the, the AUR and stuff like that. So if you want to be a part of that, um, definitely consider, you know, donating. But otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.